Live from the BDN Studios, it's Bang and Dang. That's awesome. If you don't like that, then you ain't black. Welcome back to Outlaws and Gunslingers with your host, Bang and Dang Mafia Edition, Outlaws and Gunslingers. We're going a little bit back in time. I should have started with this guy, but um, Joe Bonanno first. But this was a guy right before old Joey Bonanno, Niccolo Shiro, which we did hear about him a little bit in the episode we did about the whole Bonanno family. All right. But uh, he was a boss. He was the second boss, but the first guy, uh, there's like literally nothing on him, but... Uh, Nicolo Cola Shiro, who we're going to be covering today. Before that, though, we'll go to our YouTube at Bang Dang Network. Give us a sub, comment, like on all the videos. There's like 374 of them. I want you to go through every single one of them, comment yes. something, and like them. Yes. And if you're listening on podcasts, do the same thing on every. Uh, you can comment on Spotify. So, yep. and uh, leave a, leave a review, leave preferably me. five stars, but leave whatever you want. Right. Um, with that. <laughs> Nicolo Shiro, nicknamed Cola, was born September 2nd, 1872, in the town of Roccamena in the province of Palermo, Sicily, to Matteo Shiro and his wife Maria Antonia Rizzuto. His father's family came from the Aberishe community of Contessa Anten- <laughs> Antelina. A few years later, Shiro's family moved to his mother's hometown in nearby Camparelli. Sure. Okay. All right. Well, Cola immigrated to the United States in the year of 1897. By May of 1902, he was living in Williamsburg, section of Brooklyn, following a return trip to Sicily. I went back. Everybody's got to go back to Sicily, right? Got to go back to the homeland. Right. April 1905, Shiro was arrested for operating a butcher shop on a Sunday, contra- contrary oh, to yeah. a New York's blue laws. Those damn early 1900s, dude. You can do shit on Sunday. Mm-mm. Literally, so dumb. Besides, go to church. He would later get a yeast infection. <laughs> <laughs> he would later become a yeast salesman and a broker. All right. Uh, he became the boss of the local mob family centered in Williamsburg in 1912 of March, replacing Sebastiano Di Gaetano. Di Gaetano. Di Gaetano. Um, seventy-two, eighty-two, ninety-two, oh two. So this dude's already thirty, forty. Wow. A little late in life there, huh? A little Shiro. Well, Secret Service informant Salvatore Clemente reported in November 1913 that Shiro was aligned. Um, uh, but he alleged that Shiro was aligned with the Morello crime family in a war against fellow New York Mafia boss and Capo de Tutti Capi. So, whoa. Capo de Capi. Never heard that one before. Uh, Salvatore de Quilla. Shiro later developed a more neutral stance, siding with neither Dequila's gang nor the Morello gang. Perfect. Shiro's gang ran with the Williamsburg area numbers gambling racket while extorting local Italian immigrants through black hand and protection rackets, which uh, we haven't really heard none of that since we covered Morello. Right. If their extortion money was not paid, the victims' homes or businesses could be vandalized or destroyed. Not could. Yep. Will. Would. He also ran his gang conservatively, oh. conducting its criminal activity. Primarily among Sicilian immigrants and not collaborating with non-Sicilian gangs. He was never arrested during his time as the old boss, avoiding attention from authorities and the media. He developed close relationships with local businesses and political leaders. And he was on the board of directors of the United Italian American Democratic Club. He ran his gang conservatively, but he was a member of the Democratic Club. <laughs> right, but he was still he still wanted to be progressive. Right. Shiro's first application for United States citizenship was rejected in 1913 due to his lack of knowledge of the USS or the U.S. Constitution. See that? He later successfully naturalized as an American citizen in 1914. In 1919, the Bureau of Investigation, before they came to the FBI, reviewed a list of black hand suspects in southern Colorado compiled by the sheriff of Herfano County. On the list of names was Shiro gangster Frank Lanza, with the sheriff writing that Lanza had arrived in Colorado from New York every May, pretending to buy cheese, but comes to organize black handers. But he bought cheese, though. Colorado, uh, did they have some damn good cheese back then or something? Maybe. Oh, man, I bet you there's That's not too s- many pictures of this. We're looking at a picture. It's called The Good Killers with Stefano Magadino, Francisco Puma, uh, Vito Bonventre, oh, shit. and Bartello Fontana. Look at that. Oh, also, also, they got Giuseppe Lombardi. Giuseppe. Gooey sep. <laughs> Gooey sep. Ah, November 11th, 1917. Two Shiro <laughs> gangsters, Antonio Mazzara and Antonino Di Benedetto, they were shot to death oh. near the intersection of North 5th and Roebling Streets in Brooklyn. 
One gunman, Antonio Mancina, was arrested near the scene, but another, a Detroit mobster called Giuseppe Busoletto, he escaped. Busoletto killed Mazzara and Di Benedetto after they refused to divulge the whereabouts of fellow Shiro gangster Stefano Magadino. Oh, Magadino. Magadino had orchestrated the murder earlier that March of Giuseppe's bro and his fellow Detroit gangster, Felice Busoletto. Due to the Mafia clan of Magadino and Vito Bonaventure feuding with the Mafia clan and with the Busolettos back in their hometown of Castel... Oh, damn. damn. I went all the way back, huh? Across the pond. Uh, <laughs> Castelmare uh, del Golfo. Uh, Holy shit. Determined to kill, but any... You think there were orders from Italy that made this happen? I don't think so. The guy these killed guys his... going rogue. Killed his brother. All right, these guys are going rogue. I don't think it's rogue. Dude runs his own family. Rogue. <laughs> <laughs> Determined to kill, but unable to locate Giuseppe Bucoletto, Bucciletto, Shiro Magadino decided to target his family. Oh, jeez. Giuseppe's cousin, Pietro Bucciletto, worked at the Ford Motor Company factory in Highland Park, Michigan. Damn. And Shiro arranged with Detroit Mafia boss, Tony Gianola, to have him murdered. Oh, shit. December 8, 1917, a Romanian auto worker named Joseph Constantin, 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 who was mistaken for Pietro Bucciletto, was shot and wounded, though. Oh, shit. Oh, you guys can't be doing that. Right. Uh, you got to know who you're looking for. Right. Back in Brooklyn, 10th of December. Is that a movie? <laughs> could be. Francesco Finaza, a dock worker related to Pietro Bucciletto, he was shot and moited by the Shiro gang outside of his home on the same corner where Mazzara and Di Benedetto were moited a month earlier. Yeah. What is that corner? Or the corner of 5th and Robert and Fifth, or whatever? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. December 17th, another Romanian auto worker in Detroit was mistaken for oh a Leto. Paul Mutrick. He was shot several times in the back and then shot twice in the head. Holy murdering dude, this guy on the spot. I'm about to cause a Romanian uprise over right. here in Detroit. Jeez. Maybe they knew it too. It was like, ah, fucking Romanian. Right, fucking Romanian bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Filthy fuckers. 22nd of December, a Petro right. Bucciletto <laughs> waited with another patches, with other passengers to board an approaching trolley. Two gunmen fired hey, multiple shots. Hey, they got the him. An errant shot through one of the trolley windows nearly hit a passenger. Oh. But Bucciletto, he survived long enough to be taken to a hospital where he told police before dying. He says, my cousin did this. I was on. He was attacked on account of his cousin. A barber named Bartolo Fontana turned himself into New York police August 21, uh, confessing to murdering Camillo Chiazzo a couple weeks earlier in New Jersey. All right. 1921 in August. Obviously. So I said August 21. <laughs> Salvatore Ceravo, a New Jersey innkeeper who helped Fontana dispose of Chiazzo's body, had just been arrested. Okay. Fontana claimed he murdered Chiazzo at the behest of the Good Killers, huh. who were a group of leading mafiosi in the Shiro gang who hailed from the Caste de la Mer del Golfo in retaliation for Chiazzo's involvement in the 1916 murder of Stefano Magadino's brother, Petro Magadino, back in Sicily. Uh -oh. What in the hell? How many guys are named Petro? There's some shit going on in Jeez. miles, thousands, thousands. Bringing it over here to America. Keep your shit in Italy. Wow. Fontana, fearing he might be murdered by Shiro's gang, agreed to help police. Set up a sting operation. Hang on. It's sting! <laughs> <laughs> it was Tony Schiavone's <laughs> He's like, it's uh, a sting. Great, great granddad's like, it's a sting! <laughs> <laughs> Start snowing for some reason. All right. <laughs> Winter's coming. <laughs> Stefano Magadino met Fontana at Grand Central Station. To give Fontana thirty dollars to help him flee the city. Damn, thirty bucks. Huh? After the exchange, Magadino was arrested by a group of undercover police: hmm. Vito Bataventre, Francesco Puma, Giuseppe Lombardi, and two other gangsters were subsequently <laughs> arrested for their involvement in the Moidas. The mothers, <laughs> the mothers. Fontana revealed that the Good Killers were also responsible for a string of other murders. Oh, of course, damn Fontana. Some of the other victims were connected to the Bucciletto family in Castel de la Mer del Golfo. While others had complained after being cheated in gambling records run by the Cheryl gang. Hmm. Others targeted were supporters of Salvatore Loacano, hmm. Loacano, who had taken over the Morello gang with Salvatore de Quilla's backing. I bet it's Loacano. Loacano Loic was Loic murdered on December 10th, 1920, several months after uh, Morello, Giuseppe Morello, had been released from prison. Okay, so look at, we're going to, uh, this is actually a story we didn't hear in the Morello and all that. Right. Good shit. According to the 1st of March, 1921 article, New York Evening Wild, seven men had placed their hands on Loicano, Loicano's, Loicano's corpse during his funeral and vowed revenge. I, 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 I. Right. <laughs> Within a few months, three of the vow makers, Salvatore Moro, Angelo Patricola, and Giuseppe Granatelli, they were murdered. Oh, geez. And then a the fourth, Angelo Legatura, 
was shot and wounded. So much for you, uh, vowing revenge. All right. Fontana named them all as victims of the good killers, which we named those earlier. Morello made a deal with Shiro, his earlier ally against Aquila, Aquila to kill Luikiano's supporters with people unfamiliar to them. All right. Well, New Jersey decided not to pursue conspiracy charges in the Chiazzo murder. Charges against Magadino were dropped, despite the New York police officer's testimony about the sting linking them to a murder, right. to the murder, as well as the charges against Bonventre. I mean, what are you going to do? Only the charges against Fontana and the three men who helped dispose of the body, who were Puma, Lombardi, and Ciaravo, Ciaravo right. remain. Yeah, these guys were the lowest of lower. Right. So they got to get something. Well, one of them's getting something. Oh, Francesco Puma was moited on a New York street while out on bail waiting trial. With a stray bullet from the shooting, also hitting a seven-year-old girl. Oh, no. Fontana went to prison for Chiazzo's murder, while the charges against Ceravo and Lombardi were eventually dropped. Oh, oh that's bullshit. All right. Magadino fled New York City after his release, ending up in Buffalo, New York area, which we all know. <laughs> and we know what he does there. Several Cheryl gangsters became mafia bosses in other cities. Frank Lanza in San Fran, Stefano Magadino in Buffalo. Dude, Frank Lanza was the smartest one. He's like, I'm going, I'm going all the way over here. <laughs> and San Fran. Gaspar, Gaspar Messina in New England. Cheryl was also close to future Los Angeles boss Nick Licata. In April 1921, Shiro admitted Nicola Gentile into his gang in order to protect, Gen- protect Gentile from Capo de Capi, Salvatore D'Aquila, as a show of Shiro's independence from D'Aquila. He said, you know what? I'll protect him from you, D'Aquila. What are you going to do about it? Right. Dude, I always wondered why, like, California and uh, uh, New Mexico and all that. Not New Mexico, but California <laughs> and, like, Texas. There was no ever no major mob influence you know like east coast and chicago and detroit and shit easy i think it's because they couldn't handle the cartel down in mexico i would say mexico <sighs> mexicans people don't think the people i always think the uh the greatest probably the smartest or most successful is the mob the italian mob but the american. most ruthless yeah, american or italian american <laughs> they probably you think they're more successful than italian or more powerful who the American mob. Of course. Then the Italian? Yes. Mm. What, yes. the Russian? Uh, well, it depends. What about All the I know is that Polish mob? Uh, successful mobsters were making millions of dollars a month. So I'm sure most, some Russians and stuff were, but you could be the low guy on the totem pole in the American mafia and be who, still breaking in who do you think, thousands. Who do you think was more disgusting as a freaking mob the cartel, obviously the cartel. The Serbian, obviously the cartel, or the Russian, <laughs> obviously the cartel. I don't know Serbians that used to eat their people. Well, that's good for them, but the uh, <laughs> the cartels in Mexico are hanging seventeen bodies off of a bridge, right, dude, and then uh, mm-hmm. cutting people's heads off and throwing them oh, in streets side, and shit. Right. You drive down the road mm-hmm. and there's just body parts, right? Oh yeah. my, dude, those guys don't fuck around. Why do they like that? Well, send it. <laughs> That's because where they live. <laughs> They're animals, dude. Animals. That's why these MS-13 gangs and all that shit, Mexican gangs, dude, they're just oh gosh, brutal. The mob, I don't know. Like, if those gangs were as serious as they are now doing all this shit, oh, oh back goodness. when the mob was really, like, 20s to 70s, 80s, right. I don't think the mob would even have lasted, dude, without um, forming, like, a bond with them or something. There's no way. Because now that's what they're doing now. That's why the mob's not as big. With, especially with drugs and shit, because it's all the cartar- cartels. Oh, the mob trying to get out of the drugs. They're still doing now with gambling legal everywhere too. That screwed their business. Then they've moved on to, um, fucking internet fraud and shit, right. identity theft and computer yeah. crimes. Pretty much. It's a, it's a it's a rough time for the old organized <laughs> crime. <laughs> <laughs> They'll find a way though. All right. Shiro gangster Giovanni. Giovanni Battista de Bella was arrested under the alias Piazza hmm. on the 14th of July, 1921, when over $100,000 worth of whiskey and numerous forged medicinal liquor permits, they were seized during a raid by Prohibition agents Izzy Einstein and Mo Smith at de Bella's Olive Oil Warehouse in Brooklyn. Yeah. Olive Oil. And it's 1921, a year after the 
prohibition took effect, you know they was cracking down on anything down. like that. Shiro had been a witness at DeBella's wedding in 1912. Oh. <laughs> witness. Well, on September 12, 1922, DeBella's bro, Salvatore, he was arrested. What does that got to do with anything? And he was later convicted, also under the alias Piazza, of killing a 17-year-old gut man, Gutman Diamond. What? His name was Gutman Diamond? Yeah, apparently. Well, Gutman. Gutman Diamond. He was a messenger for Western Union. Oh, you can't mess with Western Union. They consider those uh, uh, U.S. mail people? No. no. But he was shooting another bootlegger, though. Well, shooting at. Uh, they need to. What did they have to throw on the line? Cheryl had been a witness at DeBella's wedding in 1924. <laughs> right. It makes no sense. Like, Just to know that they Who cares? <laughs> August 2nd, 1922, Secret Service agents arrested Shiro gangster Benjamin Gallo. So Shiro does nothing. Right. He's just getting all those guys arrested. Right. Uh, Gallo got arrested with four others for operating a sophisticated counterfeiting plant at a bakery on Rockaway Avenue in Brooklyn. You dumbass. There, agents found dyes, presses, paper, and hundreds of dollars worth of counterfeit $5, 10 and $20 bills. I bet it's so easy to do that back then. Fuck yeah, along with illicit alcohol still as well. Wow. Six days later, a banquet was held at Benjamin Gallo's restaurant in Brooklyn. Okay. <laughs> 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 hey, good uh, they're having fun and uh, right. at the same time. All their guys are wow. getting whacked. Oh, an African American named George Mendez. Wow. Oh, okay. He went to the banquet and sat by the door. <laughs> after, several, <laughs> <laughs> after several minutes, men then Mendez was approached and told, You're liable to get the Ku Klux Klan treatment for obstinate colored folks. Jeez. Yeah, Italians don't like the black guys, man. Mm, yeah. Mendez pointed out that he had bought a ticket to the banquet and he was entitled to the seat he was then stabbed and beaten by gallo and a crowd of banquet diners and a crowd holy shit wow mendez survived and he was taken to the hospital when gallo was arrested again for the attack Jeez. future mob boss <laughs> joseph bonanno illegally immigrated to the united states during the mid-20s soon joined the shiro gang and becoming a protege of salvatore maranzano in his autobiography, Bonanno writes that he thought Shiro was a compliant fellow with little backbone. Oh, an extremely he reluctant. Like that, didn't it? Yeah, he like, seems like a little bitch. Right. And extremely reluctant to ruffle anybody. Bonanno second, second, <laughs> <laughs> Bonanno's second cousin, Vito Bonventre, remained a leader within Shiro's gang following his arrest and release during the Good Killers affair. During Prohibition, Bonventre developed a widespread bootlegging operation with Bonanno, recalling next to Shiro, Bonventre was probably the most wealthy. I think he was probably actually the the guy, you know what I mean? But Shiro somehow. He's just old school Sicilian guy. Right. Salvatore Maranzano, Casa La Maria. Wow, can we hear about Shiro's <laughs> life? Holy fuck. Right. Salvatore Maranzano, a Castellamare del Golfo born son in law of the Sicilian mafia boss <laughs> in Trapani. He joined the Shiro gang in the mid 1920s. Right. He helped it create an extensive bootleg network in Dutchess County, New York. Along with a ring providing fraudulent immigration. Fraudulent. And, <laughs> fragile. And naturalization documents that Italians smuggled into the United States. Italians. <laughs> <laughs> Reptilians. <laughs> um, okay, that's good. That's probably pretty lucrative. Right. He had a, he had, he, he had a ring providing fraudulent immigration and right. naturalization documents to Italians yeah. smuggled in the U.S. Okay. Between 1923 and the year 1928, Shiro felt secure enough. In his position as boss to make three trips to Europe. 19, wow. What does that mean? Oh, he knows that when he they when he comes back. Over there or, or when he comes back, he's still going to be the boss. All right. Or when he goes overseas, whoever runs that territory over there is not going to get capped. Think anybody's running in Europe? Of course. Well, was Italy's any? in Europe. <laughs> they did, did they have their Italian? No, I... What's right. an, what, Are there other countries that had an offshoot of the Italian mafia? That's what I want to know. I bet you London had something. Nah. What was Peaky Blinders? L London had uh, their own guys. Right. They're like the London arse kickers or something. <laughs> hooligans, they call right. them. The hooligans. Between Soccer hooligans. Right. He had three trips to Europe because he felt secure enough as the boss. 1929 of January, Shiro traveled to, United, to uh, Los Angeles to attend the wedding of the son of the San Francisco boss, Frank Lanza. All right. So good for him for traveling. Salvador de Quilla was murdered October 10th, 1928. Fellow New York boss Joe Masseria was selected to replace him as a new Capo de Capi. Yep. Following his elevation, Masseria began demanding monetary tributes from other mafia gangs. Says, I'm the boss. Right. You give me money. Jeez. Shiro provoked Masseria's ire after warning San Francisco boss Frank Lanza of a mafia plot to kidnap him. Oh, uh -oh. shit. Masseria demanded Shiro pay a $10,000 and step down as boss of his crime family in order to spare his life. What? Damn it, he listened. 
Wow. After being forced out, Shero returned to his hometown of Camparel, Sicily. Oh. Judicial summons for Shero and other officers of their Master Built Housing Corporation was published in Brooklyn, in Brooklyn newspapers in the fall of 1931. Year 1934, a memorial was dedicated to in uh, Campo Real to soldier to its soldiers killed during World War One. Oh, that's cool. It was built from donations collected by Shero from Campo Reyes, Campo Relizi? Sure. Campo Relizi immigrants in America. O'Shero stripped from his U.S. citizenship following a request by the American consulate in Palmero on the 14th of October, year 1949. Palermo. Yep. <laughs> he died in Camporeale, Camporeale, Camporeale on April 29th, 1957. So this dude was just, I don't even know how his what boss. What a bitch, dude. I don't even know how his what boss. What a bitch, dude. was like, you step down and, uh, all right, I'll go back home to Sicily. <laughs> He's like, uh, I'm actually surprised you guys let me be this long. Oh, wow, <laughs> this like, guy. I know. What the hell was this all about? It wasn't even about Shiro. Literally everything we just heard in this guy's story, we're going to have to now revisit all these other guys' stories that we're going to have to do. Ridiculous. Shiro, what a waste of time. Right. For you, Cola. guy. Knew we shouldn't have done anything on this guy. <laughs> um, Gasper don't got shit. Uh, speaking of another guy from this time era... The next boss after Bonanno is uh, Gaspar Di Gregorio, which follows suit on the Genovese crime family that this guy has really nothing. So, which means he's probably going to have another uh, another, gay. another guy with him, which another is probably gay. going to be Di Gregorio. Oh, Paul uh, Shasha or Siaka, Siaka. Um, maybe Joe Diamond's Evola. I don't know. We got a lot of people that probably don't have very good stories. Rusty Rustelli. Yeah, a lot of these guys got nothing, man. Well, with that, I'm gonna finish up this episode on everybody but Shiro. <laughs> this guy didn't say nothing about him. Nothing. All they did is said he was the boss, and then a couple and then years later, they're like, "Step no. down." <laughs> right. like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll go back to Sicily. And yeah, so. This mafia trend, I'm not liking it. <laughs> mafia sucks, dude. Not as entertaining as I thought it was going to be. It will be. I don't know. We might just have to say fuck these little guys when we're going to hear the same story on a hundred of them and just do the big stories. We'll see. <laughs> Still got three other families. Yeah, right? three other families. We just did the, the two biggest. Yeah. Gambino. All we got on the Gambino is uh, Gambino and maybe, uh, um, what's his name? There's a lot of stuff on Gambino. Anyways, that's going to do it for us in this Mafia edition of Outlaws and Gunslingers. In the meantime, go check out our other podcast, Battles of the Mickle Civil War. We're winding down the year of 1863, heading into 1864, and this war is slowly but surely coming to an end, and it's not looking good for the old Confederates. And also, according to Wikipedia, we're this week's yeah, episode. Yeah, we're to see how this war is going to end. Who's going to win? <laughs> Who's going right. to win it? Right. It's a cliffhanger. Um, and not quite. Sicily or uh, the other Castel de Bildable. Bil, Bil. um, we, on according to Wikipedia, we did Venice, Italy. Right. So, read that little Wikipedia article on Venice and shithole on a piece of land in the middle of the freaking water. Red sea. Uh, next week's episode should be entertaining to everybody, though, because or the Mediterranean. We are uh, both. We are. Uh, Forced to read about Kamala Harris next week on Gordon Wikipedia. Oh, so that's gonna be terrible. Right, actually, it would be this week's episode that you're listening. <laughs> oh no, it won't. <laughs> and with that, like I said, go check out YouTube at Bang Dang Network. Subscribe, and if you're listening on this podcast app, because give us a review and a ranking and all that. Yesterday is just as important as today as today is just as important as tomorrow as tomorrow was just as important as yesterday. <laughs> My mama used to always tell me. <laughs> My favorite rapper alive is Tupac. <laughs> Stupid bitch. Stupid bitch. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next week for Outlaws of Gunslingers Mavia, where the Mother Michiganders will be. Ding, ding.